All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here today for our Stress Awareness Month webinar um, here at Reddington Fairview General Hospital. My name is Brittany Dunphy. I'm the Community Health Educator here at Reddington. Um, in a moment, I will turn it over to our speaker for today, um, who is De Denise White, our Clinical Staff Development Specialist here at Reddington Fairview. Um, just a couple housekeeping items. Um, this is the webinar platform of Zoom, so you do not have the option to come off of Zoom, uh, come off of mute. Um, there is a Q and A feature, chat feature um, in the webinar. So if you do have questions or comments throughout the presentation, please um, pop those into the chat. Um, after the presentation, we will have a brief survey that I'm going to put the link into the chat. So if you would just consider. Um, taking some time to fill that out. It just helps us know how the webinar went for you, how our speaker was, how the topic was, and it just helps us plan future classes. Um, so without further ado, I am going to um, bring in Denise White, our clinical staff development specialist, to introduce herself and start presenting. Hi there. Can everybody hear me okay? Oops. Nope. Didn't want to do that. We can hear you. Okay. Well, hello, everybody, and thank you for coming. Um, as Brittany said, I, my name is Denise White, and I am the Clinical Staff Development Specialist here at um, Reddington Fairview. A little background on me. I, um, I am a nurse. I've been a nurse for 25 years. Uh, I worked night shift in the ICU for 23. I uh, did a year of management and I've been in education for a little over two years now. So that being said, let me share my screen. Mm, yep, share. Okay. All right. Brittany, can you tell me if everybody can see that in presentation mode? Yep, we can see it. Oh, perfect. Okay. All right. So today's talk basically is on stress, stress, injury, and illness, and then creating a stress toolkit and why you need one. Um, at this point, I will tell you that I can't see anything, Brittany, in the, the chat or the Q&A. So if you could keep an eye on that for me, I would appreciate that. <laughs> So stress toolkit, what is it and why you need one? Well, before we decide why we need one, we really need to talk about what is stress. Um, is stress bad? Not all stress is bad, but what is stress? Stress is feelings of emotional or physical tension that come from an event or thought. Not necessarily good, not necessarily bad, okay? Um, can stress be good? It can be, it can help you avoid danger. It can help you achieve a goal or meet that deadline. You know, when you have stress because you have that project that's coming up and you're kind of wringing your hands because you know you have to get it done. That can be positive. It can actually force you to get it done. The negative side to stress is when it's chronic and it's continuous over a long period of time. So chronic stress um, without rest or recovery can lead to stress, illness, and injury. And let's get into actually what is stress injury. So Stress is not bad, okay? When you're stuck in stress, that's when it's bad. So stress without rest or recovery. So if you are stressed out at work and you're stressed out on your drive home and you are stressed out when you get to home and then you're stressed out when you try to go to sleep and this constant cycle of constantly being in this stressed state, that actually leads to stress injury, um, which can be something simple as a headache, um, GI issues, okay? It also leads into stress illness, which is a little bit more severe. That's where you get your depression and your anxiety, um, your substance use disorders, kind of your lifelong uh, stress illnesses. So what are some causes of stress injury? And there are four main causes. Um, one is trauma. And it's not a, te a technical definition of trauma. It's whatever you consider to be trauma. Okay. Um, you got into a car accident right? Somebody hit the side of your car. Nobody got hurt, 
So somebody else may not see that as a traumatic event. You, however, may find that a traumatic event. So it's whatever you consider to be trauma. Grief injury. Again, it doesn't have to be, you know, the death of a loved one. It can be the death of an idea, the death of an opportunity. Okay. Um, whatever you consider grief. And grief is not, um, I don't want to say this. Grief is, doesn't have to be a death. It can be the death of an idea or a loss of some sort. Okay. So it's, you lost a promotion at work. You definitely can grieve over that. Grieving is normal. Grieving is natural. Grieving is helpful. Okay. It, it helps us to move down the cycle when you're stuck in grief, when it becomes an abnormal situation, that was what can lead to stress and stress injury. Moral stress simply of you know what the right thing to do is but because of either inside or outside forces you're not able to do that so you get you have this ethical moral conflict within yourself that can lead to stress and then fatigue i don't think i need to tell anybody what fatigue means i think we are all very well aware of fatigue but honestly being tired can lead to chronic stress if you're never getting enough rest, if you're never, if your body is never having that chance to kind of reset and settle down, um, it can definitely lead to stress illness. So again, stress injury leads into stress illness when it becomes more chronic. So that comes into your um, post-traumatic stress disorders, your depression, your anxiety, your um, substance use disorders. So now that we kind of understand what that is, what are some signs of stress? Okay. So minor signs of stress, muscle tension, you get the headache, you're giving a presentation, you get the sweaty palms, you're you know, a little nervous and you're anxious, a little bit irritable. Okay, those are minor signs of stress and those are normal signs of stress. And we'll, we'll get into the situational versus long-term in a few minutes. Um, but some major signs of stress, excessive guilt, shame or blame, kind of feeling out of control or panicked. This is when it starts to hit your, your physical self as well because you have your gi issues um you can have heart issues heart palpitations those kinds of things when it's severe that's when you get into your suicidal ideations your substance use disorder um lack of self-care depression anxiety loss of hope self-isolating um addictions and then your um, post-traumatic stress disorder so when stress becomes a problem is when it's abnormal stress Okay, situational versus long-term. So let's take some minor stress symptoms, right? You have muscle tension, headaches, sweaty palms. You have to give a presentation and you hate giving presentations. You hate talking in front of people, right? So you have that headache, you get the sweaty palms, you get the nervousness and you're constantly wringing your hands or playing with your notes or whatever. That's a minor so cause of stress. Once you give the presentation, the stress goes away. When it's abnormal, that stress lingers for two weeks after the presentation, you're still feeling that stress. And the cause is the presentation. Did I do a good job? Did I not do a good job? I should have done this better. I should have done it. That can become abnormal stress. So that's when it turns from or situational to long-term. Situational is, I have this really big project to do. I have to get it done tonight. The deadline is midnight, okay? Tomorrow morning, after you hand it in, Okay, I handed it in. It's done. The stress should be over at that point. I'm not panicking anymore um, because I handed it in. It's done. If you stress about it, it will lead to these long-term effects. Okay, if it's once the situation is over, but you're still stressing about it, that's when stress becomes abnormal. So it leads to cardiovascular disease. That's your heart palpitations, high blood pressure, heart attacks, eating disorders, whether over or under eating. GI issues. I think we all know what GI issues are. Um, skin and hair issues, again, causes a lot of people for their hair to get very thin and fall out when they get stressed. Sexual dysfunction, addiction, depression, and anxiety. And honestly, we have enough of, we have enough stress on a daily basis in just our general lives. Um, they're minor, but they all kind of build up. So if we have an abnormal stress reaction to something that can kind of put us over the edge. So what is a stress toolkit? How do we stop this cycle? How do we prepare for this cycle and get ready for ourselves, right? So we create a stress toolkit. Why? Because when you are at your most stressed, when you are feeling your worst, you're not gonna be able to think of anything to do to make you feel better. 
You've got to set things up ahead of time so that when you know you're stressed, you can pull out your toolkit and say, okay, I'm going to do these things because they make me feel better. Okay. What is in a stress toolkit? Well, it's a collection of whatever fills your cup, whatever makes you happy. Uh, for me, it's looking at, you know, pictures of dogs and cats. I love animals. They calm me down. Pictures of my puppy calm me down. Um, pictures of nature may calm you down. Pictures of the snow or the beach. Pictures of the beach makes me anxious. I do not like the beach. I don't like the salt, salt sand, sun, or seaweed. Um, so that wouldn't be in my toolkit. Okay. But when you're not feeling that stressed, you can differentiate between what stresses you out and what doesn't. Um, so it's a collection of kind of what fills your cup, what makes you happy. Um, chocolate should be in everybody's stress cool stool kit straight across the board because I think chocolate is a great stress reliever at times, but it's whatever your, your candy of choices, if you will. Um, who needs a stress toolkit? Everybody. Everybody needs a stress toolkit. Everybody feels stress at one time or another. Even if it's not abnormal stress, even if it's not long-term stress, we all feel stressed, right? No matter what, whether job, work, home, driving, food shopping, we all feel stressed. So when do you create the stress toolkit? Well, now. Um, after this lecture, you're gonna have the information and the questions and some ideas. So your homework is to create your own stress toolkit. How do you go about doing that? Well, you're gonna ask yourself a, a certain number of questions. And when I mean, when I say a stress toolkit, I don't necessarily mean a physical toolkit. Um, it could be something as a list on your phone in your notes section right? It can be a piece of paper that you keep folded up in your wallet or your purse. It can be really anything that works for you, okay? You're going to ask yourself a couple of questions and it's going to be included in your stress kit. So what are your warning signs? Everybody has warning signs, whether you think you do or not. Um, you cannot always tell what your warning signs are, but if you ask your significant other or a close friend or a coworker, they can probably tell you. My husband can tell me what my warning signs are, and he notices them way before I do. Um, so what are your warning signs? And make a list. Write it down if you have to. I know that when I drink four cups of coffee, because I have to have that extra little bit of caffeine, I know that I'm getting stressed. I limit myself to two cups a day. If I get to the fourth one, I know I'm getting stressed. Or if I cannot sleep, if I have insomnia for two nights in a row, I know I'm getting stressed. So understand what your warning signs are. They may be small, they may be very large, um, but understand what they are. Also understand what it looks like when you feel like a 10. So when you feel like you're great, you're not stressed, you feel relaxed, you feel at peace, you feel content, what does that look like to you? How do you feel? On the flip side, think about what a one looks like. Think about when you are the most stressed, when you are stressed at home, at work, and the stress is just overwhelming to you. What does that look like? Know where you are, okay? And what are your triggers? What sets you off? Is it bad drivers? Is it telemarketers? What are your pet peeves? What can send you into a stress tizzy, okay? This one, who can I call? We all have lots of friends on social media and we all have coworkers and we all have friends that we have their phone, their numbers in our phone. But when you are really down and out and when you need that person who understands you better than anybody, who is that one person? Make sure their name and phone number is in your stress toolkit because you're not going to think about who can I call. You're going to think about, I don't want to bother this person. I don't want to bother that person. I don't want to call this person. I don't want to call a person. You're going to run through and you're going to run out of people. Think about it ahead of time, who you're going to call, who's going to be your safety net. Okay. Also include what makes you smile. Like I said, dogs, uh, pictures of dogs and cats makes me smile all the time. It actually relaxes me. I can feel myself relaxing. So on my phone, I have an album of stress relief pictures and it's pictures of my dog, my cat, funny quotes, funny memes. As you can tell, I do like memes from this presentation. Um, they make me smile. They make me happy. They make me laugh. They're all part of the stress toolkit. So what makes you smile? Is it a picture of your grandkids? Is it a picture of your kids or your significant other? Is it a vacation destination or somewhere you've been? Is it a picture of your family? 
Is it your your safe space, whether it be is your bedroom your oasis? Okay. Is your closet calming to you? Whatever you have, it doesn't matter how ridiculous it is. What do you look at and say, ah, you can feel your body relax? Okay. What makes you happy? You know, just going for a walk in nature make you happy, regardless of the weather. Write that. Put that in your stress tool that that makes you happy. Um, does going for a run with your music on make you happy? For me, that stresses me out. The idea of having to run anywhere stresses me out. So that's not part of my stress toolkit. Um, what activities do you enjoy? What activities are calming to you? Is it reading? Is it sitting in the corner under a blanket with a cup of tea and a, a good book reading? Is that stress relieving for you? Put that down. Make It seems silly to be making a list of these things because you know what you like to do. You know what makes you happy. In the time when you're the most stressed, none of this is going to come to your head. The other thing I want you to put into your stress toolkit is your personal mission statement. Now, we all know companies, businesses, organizations, they all have mission and vision statements, okay? And you may not know that as an individual, whether it be as a family or just as an individual, you can have a vision and vision statement. What do you envision for the future? What are some of your values? What are the things that are so important to you? They are non-negotiables. Think about it, write them down. Create a mission statement. Um, if you go to Google and if you uh, look up creating personal mission statement, there are templates on there of how to create one. Take the time and go through it. Why is this important? Because once you figure out what's important to you, when you are truly stressed, if you read that, if you go back to basics, go back to your values, go back to why you do things, that can lead you in the right direction to the next choice you have to make. It's your personal GPS, okay? So here are some ideas next of things that you can put into your toolkit, okay? And we've mentioned a couple of these. So pictures, songs, create a playlist on your phone. Um, there's some songs that I like to listen to when I'm upset and I cry along with them. And there's some songs that I like to listen to when I'm angry and I kind of scream along with them. Have those different playlists, right? Um, have some quotes in there, right? Have some funny quotes, um, have some funny memes in there. Letters or cards from loved ones. I can go back and read birthday cards from my mom um, with her little notes inside, you know, and they make me feel so much better. My mom died 28 years ago, but just having that in my toolkit makes me feel better. Laughing, laughing is so important. Um, don't care. What, what makes you laugh? Is it a funny movie? Is it a funny card? Um, is it just a funny situation? Is it a two minute clip from a movie that you have saved in your phone, right? What makes you laugh? Social interactions, right? Who do you interact with that makes you feel better? This is important to think about because certain people will make you more stressed when you're stressed. And we all have those people in our lives and we know that, okay? But who makes you feel better when you're with them? Whether you're just sitting with them, talking with them, hanging out with them, doesn't matter. Who makes you feel better? A couple other things that you can do um, is breath work. And something very simple. Uh, this is called four by four box breathing. There's a couple of different ways to do this. I've heard like six by six or whatever, but um, the research that I've done, four by four box breathing is done by um, snipers in our military to calm them down, to ground them, to bring them back into focus so that they can concentrate and take the shot. And quite frankly, I figure if it's good enough for snipers, it's good enough for me on a daily basis, right? So what it is, is four by four box breathing. So you're going to inhale for a count of four, you hold it for a count of four, you exhale for a count of four, and then hold that for a count of four. After you try that, try that a couple of times, it will actually, you can actually feel your body calm down. You can feel your heart rate slow, your blood pressure come down and just feel more grounded in where you're sitting. Um, the other thing is physical activity. Does physical activity um, work for you? Something simple you can do sitting at a desk, sitting in your car, sitting anywhere. What you do is you tense your mes muscles up, excuse me, muscles up really, really tight. So even if your arms, tense them up really, really tight, hold it for like 10 seconds and then release it. That actually releases chemical stress in your body. It makes your body relax. Um, aromatherapy. 
Uh, I heard the other day people use scented soaps for different moods, right? Aromatherapy for me is fresh baked chocolate chip cookies. I love that. But whether it be a candle, whether it be an air freshener, um, aromatherapy, they have little inhalers that you can use with essential oils, anything like that, whatever works for you. Stop, um, S-T-O-P-P, -P, and there's, it's not a mistype there. It actually has two Ps in it. What this stands for is, um, the S stands for actually stop. The T stands for take a step back. The O is for observe. The first P is for, um, for practicing what works. And the second P is for proceeding. Okay. So you're going to stop. If you're in a stressful situation, stop, take a step back, whether it's a physical step or just a mental step, right? Observe what's going on around you. Be objective in your observations. Okay. Then you're going to kind of plan what see what kind of works. You're going to preview what works and you're going to proceed with that. Um, gratitude. Again, everybody knows that gratitude is very important. Gratitude, it's um, scientifically proven to make people feel better. But gratitude, I actually break it down to the smaller things. It makes you appreciate smaller things in life. Um, try a gratitude journal, right? Three things today that you're grateful for. And it's not the family and the friends and the job and the car. And we all know we're all grateful for that, right? It, that's not, it's the little things. It's the fact that the sun is shining and it was cloudy this morning. It's the fact that I have a hot cup of tea next to me. You know, it's the fact that my favorite song is playing on the radio. It's the little things, but it makes you appreciate the little things so much more. The other thing is turn off social media and the news. Okay. Do not, when you are stressed, the worst thing to do is to get on social media or the news because it's going to make you more stressed, right? The news very rarely is it good news. It's always bad news. If it bleeds, it leads, right? That's what they say about the news. So it's always going to be bad news. Social media is not doing us any favors. Social media is a snapshot of somebody's life when it's perfect. And I use that term very, very loosely. Um, and it gives us an impossible objective to live up to. Okay. So if you see a picture of a person's house and they just cleaned it and it looks beautiful, it looks perfect. And they snapped a picture. What you didn't see was five minutes later, the dog came in, the cat came in and threw up on the rug. There's dog hair everywhere. The three kids came in and emptied up their toolbox, on, uh, their toy box on the floor. You don't see that picture. All you know is that this person has three kids and a couple pets and their house is like this for a moment, maybe. Um, doodle or color. There are so many adult coloring books out there right now and they're fun and they're good to have. And it keeps your hands busy and it kept your mind focused. Okay. A brain dump, have a piece of paper next to your bed, have it on your desk, whatever. If your brain, if you can't turn your brain off and this happens a lot of times at night to a lot of people, you just can't sleep because you can't turn your brain off because it's going and going and going and thinking of all the things you have to do. Right. Have a piece of paper next to you, write down. Write down everything that's in your head. It doesn't have to be in complete sentences. It doesn't have to even make sense. Okay. If you're thinking of it, write it down and then deal with it in the morning. This one is my own personal favorite snuggle your pet. Um, if you have a cat or a dog or a ferret or a parrot, I don't care what kind of pet you have, there is nothing like that unconditional love that you get from a pet. Um, when you walk in the house and somebody runs to greet you and shakes your little tail and wag wags your little tail at you, and comes and gives you a big old kiss, how can you be stressed at that, right? Wash your face. This was an interesting one. And I actually did some research into this one. By the cold water actually hitting your face, it's grounding to you. It takes you out of that stress cycle. It brings you back to reality, um, which is something you can do very easily. Go in the bathroom, splash some water on your face, right? Plan some stress management activities. Okay. Or shall I call them self-care activities, whether it be a vacation, whether it be an exercise class, whether it be a manicure, whatever you find self-care or taking a bath, right? Turning off everything and reading for 30 minutes, whatever it is, plan some of them, put them into your calendar. Um, but also have a list of ones you can do again in the moment, the breathing, the stop, 
the uh, aromatherapy. I see that I did skip one on this list. Actually, I skipped the five, four, three, two, one. And I'll go back to that because that's something else you can do in the moment. So it's five things that you see, four things that you hear, three things that you feel, two things that you smell, and one thing that you taste. Now, I, I always preface this by saying, depending on where you are, and I'm a nurse, I leave the last two off because the smelling and the tasting thing is probably not what you want to do when you're stressed in this situation. But again, five things that you see, right? I see the sun outside my window. Well, I kind of see some black clouds out there now, but you know, that's what I see. I see my hot tea next to me. I see my phone. I see the computer mouse here. I see my water bottle. Four things that I hear. I hear the air handler in the hospital. Okay. I can hear a little bit of echo in my headset. My headset. Uh, three things that you feel, right? I can feel the window. The window is cold. I can feel the heater. The heater is hot. I can feel the desk. The desk is hard and firm. All of that brings you back. It grounds you and it brings you into the present moment. All right. Um, so I bet you guys didn't think you had homework today, but you do. So your homework is to create your own stress toolkit. Um, take some of these ideas, think about some of these ideas and think about what you want in your toolkit, what makes you happy, what fills your cup. The other thing is to schedule regular checkups. And I don't mean with your physician. I mean, with yourself, you're going to do a checkup from the neck up. Okay. Check in with yourself, whether it be once a day, once a week, once a month, Give your, where are you on that one to 10 scale where you're feeling really great and you're feeling really bad? Where are you? Give yourself a number. Okay. Find out what's going on in your life. You can do this every night before bed. How was today? Well, today was stressful. How am I feeling right now? I'm feeling completely wiped out. I'm down at a three. Okay. You have to name it in order to fix it. Know how stressed you are. And then plan some stress management activities. Go do something for yourself, something you enjoy. The weather is, in theory, supposed to be getting nicer, I think, next week. They said we're in like the high 60s for temperatures. Get out there. Take a walk on your lunch break. Or run around the building. Walk around the building. Whatever you need to do. Okay. Put something into your life that will help reduce some of your stress. And your other homework is to share this information with a friend. We all have friends that are stressed. We all have people in our lives that are stressed. Um, say, tell, tell them what's in your stress toolkit. Guarantee they probably haven't heard of it. Um, you can look it up online um, and everything. You can tell them, I'm worried about you. You're stressed. Here's what you need to do a stress, uh, stress toolkit. Here's what's in mine. Okay. Um, so I generally end with homework, but that's it. That's the presentation for today. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here real quick if i can find it there we go um, okay so um did, is there anything any questions that came up anything in the chat anybody want to kind of um put in the chat maybe mention what some of the things that are going to be in their toolkit what some things they find that are stress relieving to them We can wait for a minute in the chat, um, but I'll share mine because okay, I please. I also love um, talking about self-care and um, Denise, I know you and I talk about self-care a lot and just um, my favorite things is I, I love scents. It's just, I just, I love smells, <laughs> good smells, obviously, but um, yeah, just like the hand lotion, the, the soap thing was really interesting to me too, because I never really thought about it, but yeah, like when you go somewhere and someone has a hand soap and you're like, oh, that smells so nice. It just kind of like uplifts your spirits. So, um, that's good. Cozy blankets, being cozy and comfy is always good. And pictures of animals, pictures of my puppy, right. stuff like that. But yeah, great talk, Denise. Thank you for Thank you. being here and doing that. Um, still wait on the chat. Um, as Denise said, if you have anything that you want to share, um, feel free to put it in the chat or any questions. I'm also going to be putting um, the link to the survey in the chat. So if you have, um, 
you know, an extra four minutes that you can take to fill out the, um, the survey. It will just, like I said, help us know how your experience was in the webinar and then just give us some feedback to plan future classes. This webinar is being recorded um, pretty soon. Um, we'll be uploading it to our YouTube channel. So as Denise said, share it with a friend. So when you start that conversation with your friends, you can send them the link and they can hear all about um, Denise's talk on building your own stress toolkit. Thank you again, Denise, um, for being here. And my uh, pleasure. Still, still not saying anything in the chat or the Q&A, but I think if folks have any questions, Denise put her contact information on the last slide. So feel free to reach out to her. Um, yeah. Thanks again for being here, everyone. Have a great day.